Hello, welcome or welcome back, my favorite movement enthusiast, to today's episode of How to Unlock Your Hamstrings the Right Way, in which we, as the name suggests, will be unlocking our hamstrings the right way. Using a more deliberate approach and working on every single muscle group simultaneously as well as step by step and putting it all together in the end to become just as flexible as we always wanted to. Now before we get to the hamstring exercises we have to talk about the two most common mistakes many people fall into and if you catch yourself doing the same thing then the first thing you need to do is readjust. Most common mistake number one is bending in your stomach instead of in your hips, meaning your back is rounded, your spine is flexed, and you're trying to touch your toes or the ground instead of pressing your back through and hinging in your hip instead of in your back or in your stomach. This will increase the pull we have on our hamstrings instead of just working on our back the slightest bit and a little bit on our glutes. This way we can literally lengthen all the muscles we need in a more effective way instead of letting go of all the tension we are building in our hamstrings through spinal flexion. Now the second most common problem, probably just as common as the first one, is what I call the butt cheat. Now the butt cheat is all about pushing your pelvis or your butt further backwards to reduce the tension on your gastric ancillaries and your Achilles tendon. Meaning, the more you move forward, like so, into a 90 degree angle to the ground or even a smaller angle in your ankle, the more pull you will have on your lower leg musculature. But once you move your butt, backwards you're gonna reduce all of the stretch and all of the pull we have on these muscles and then you can cheat yourself into thinking you already can touch your toes or your hamstrings or your posterior chain is really flexible when in fact it is not so whenever you catch yourself doing the butt cheat i would advise you to just move forward and you're gonna instantly notice the difference in stretch and flexibility required to even get to this point so let's check out two exercises that are all about doing a correct forward fold or bending forward the right way. Let's start out with two exercises that are gonna target all of the posterior chain muscles, starting with an easy one and a more advanced one, and then we'll break it down into step-by-step, muscle-by-muscle exercises to make it a little bit more easy to have an overview. For our first exercise, it couldn't be any simpler. We're gonna sit down with both legs fully extended in front of our body, let your feet loose for now, and the first thing we need to do is bring our back into spinal extension or at the very least a neutral position. So now we already have some pull on our glutes and our hamstrings. The next thing we need to do is pull our toes in and now we're already including our lower leg musculature. Many people will already have a really good stretch just trying to sit upright like so. And if you don't, now is the time to start bending forward. What's really important though is that your back stays in a neutral or extended position instead of switching into spinal flexion and rounding your back because that is going to make it so much easier to grab your feet or your toes but it's cheating you out of the required or necessary mobility we need in your legs. So hinge in your hip forward. You're going to have to flex your quads and your hip flexors and lower abdominals and then relax again. Now the range of motion of this movement doesn't have to be very long, it just has to be controlled. And just by moving forward a couple of centimeters, you're gonna definitely notice an increase in the stretch. And the better you get at this, the more you can move forward and forward and forward until you can grab your feet with an extended back, not with a rounded one, as well as having your shoulder blades pulled back instead of lengthening your shoulders, which is also gonna cheat you out of the leg mobility or the leg flexibility because I can lengthen my shoulders really, really well. And depending on where your shoulder blades are positioned, you're gonna be cheating less or more or not at all. For the people who already struggle with sitting upright with both legs extended and their toes pulled in, just having 
the tiniest bit of elevation right here is gonna open up your pelvis, relax your hips and give you a better chance of pressing your back all the way through. And this is one of the best cheats or tricks you can use to slowly but surely give yourself more space to work on this problem without having to resort to other methods where you're pulling on your legs and pulling on muscles. Just elevate your butt and do the same thing. Back extended, move forward and forward and forward as you go along. As for our second exercise that I would highly suggest you start working on is going to be a pyramid pose as it is known in yoga or a staggered forward fold. Whatever you want to call it, we're going to have one foot in front of the other, take a long step and this one is going to help us work a little bit on our lower leg musculature on one side while working on the upper leg musculature on the other side. So now we can take it apart upper and lower. Here of course we're gonna switch from a rounded or flexed spine into an extended spine and you're gonna notice the front leg hamstring stretch, the back leg calf stretch and all you need to do from here once again is hinge forward and slowly relax again. Hinge forward and slowly relax again and then of course you're gonna switch positions and work the same way you did before. Now here you gotta be careful that your pelvis stays parallel to the ground because your hip is going to try and compensate for a lack of mobility by turning sideways which is going to make it easier for you to bend forward so every time you notice this you're just gonna do this one and extend your back once more. So now we have two exercises that in theory should be more than enough to help you get into a forward fold or a pike position. However, if you wanna take it step by step and muscle by muscle, let's check that out too. So for our first exercise, we're gonna just start at the very bottom and work our way up with every single exercise. Number one, elevating your toes, extending your leg. No stretch here. But once you move forward with your other foot like so and start pushing forward, now you're gonna notice your Achilles tendon, gastric and soleus are getting pulled and lengthened. However, you are still a little bit more relaxed in your hamstrings because the more you elevate your toes, the more of a pull you're gonna have have on your lower musculature. Now the good thing about this exercise is if you really really elevate those toes then you don't even have to bend forward and you can just stay upright and still get that nice little stretch. So whenever you're standing somewhere you can easily just elevate your toes if you're waiting for something and now you're already basically stretching and working on your posterior chain mobility. Now for our hamstring dominant stretch we will move into the pyramid once more but this time instead of keeping your back foot flat on the ground and increasing the stretch we have on our calves we're gonna relax it so we can concentrate more on our hamstrings in the front leg because we're going going to switch from the pyramid starting position into what is called a reverse triangle stretch or reverse triangle pose. So the right hand is on the ground, the left foot is in the front and now we're going to switch into spinal rotation and this is going to increase the pull on your hamstrings while totally having your lower leg musculature relaxed so you can really focus on just that one muscle group or these muscle groups and all you need to do is is turn and add some spinal rotation as much as you can. The more you turn outward, the more you're gonna have pull in your hamstrings. And additionally, we're also working a little bit on our glutes, which is already the next exercise on our list. If you don't have the required flexibility to bring your hand down towards the ground while your leg is extended, you can bend it a little bit and you're still gonna get the same stretch until you are able to push your leg through or you can just elevate your hand and that's gonna pretty much do the same thing. Turn into the reverse triangle, hold the stretch and let go again. So now it's time to move up one step to our glutes and our lower back musculature or spinal erectors. Now you definitely know what I'm about to do if you've ever been on this channel before. So I will give you a couple of seconds to think of it before I get into position. Left foot right in front of our right leg because we're working on the left side and most of you will have guessed it. We are getting into a pigeon stretch start 
starting position. So bring that leg down and then start actively pushing your pelvis down towards the ground. This is gonna open up our glutes while additionally working on the hamstring insertions as well, our adductors and abductors, a little bit on our quadriceps, which is amazing, and also a little bit on our hip mobility and hip hinge ability. So now we're gonna start out in an extended or upright pigeon and the more pull you need or the more pull you can live through, the more you can move your upper body down all the way. The lower you go, the more stretch you're gonna have. And if you wanna work the tiniest bit dynamically to add some hip rotation, you can move diagonally to the back and diagonally to the front. Bring your hip flexor or your hip joint right to your foot before you turn outwards again. So now we're switching the stretch between between here and here, outside of the upper leg and a lot more on the glutes. You can also just relax here, take a short break, maybe take a short nap for half an hour. And once you wake up, your glutes and your lower back are gonna be so relaxed and you're gonna be able to get into that forward fold as much as you like. Now this brings us to a final exercise and this is a bonus exercise only meant for the people who enjoy working with loaded stretches or maybe wanna add a strength aspect to their flexibility routine as well. So we're going to do Jefferson curls. Please, if you've never done this before, take the lowest amount of weight you can use and we're gonna start at the very top, fully extended. I hope you can see me and from here we're gonna start with an extended back into the hip hinge as much as we can and once we notice okay our back can't go any lower while we are extended then we're gonna start rounding our back and letting the weight pull us deeper and deeper and deeper down now you're gonna notice there is a little bit more flexibility to be taken so we're just gonna start elevating our body and this way we can let the weights take us deeper and deeper into that stretch before we start extending our upper body once more. Now there are two schools of thought when it comes to the Jefferson curl. One suggests that it's better to switch into spinal extension before you get up and the other one is all about moving vertebrae for vertebrae until you are fully extended again. Do whatever you feel like as long as you don't have any pain. This exercise is amazing in helping you work on that forward fold or pike position as well. And now we are basically ready to finish this. So Close your feet, extend both your legs, start out here, extend your back and bend your knees the tiniest bit. We're gonna start with the hip hinge first and bringing our upper body as closely to our upper legs as possible while having our back extended or while flexing our spinal erectors. So if we relax them, this is what we're gonna get. And if we flex them, this is what we're gonna get. Our upper body is now completely on top of our upper legs. And now we're gonna start stretching or basically just extending our knees. And it's not gonna be a long movement until you feel this stretch all the way into complete extension and bring your butt forward, of course, so we don't cheat. And if you wanna let go of some tension, relax the tiniest bit, keep your upper body on top of your upper legs and then slowly extend once more. Now, touching my toes with my back fully extended is already no problem, but over time, you're gonna be able to bring your entire upper body on top of your legs and then you're there. You are forward folding like a master. Not just that, but these exercises are gonna also help you with the straddle position or pancake fold. Now you only need to work a little bit more on your adductors and hip mobility but this is also a really nice bonus that you can add to your repertoire. Now, sadly, this is all the time I have left for you today. However, if you like the video, like the video and subscribe and check out other videos on this channel because we have literally new ones every single day. So until tomorrow, Captain Cairo, peace out.